This is Spotlight, Women Tech Makers series on career and professional development, and this is a special two-part series. I'm Caitlin, and today I am joined by Sargon and Nikki, who are the founders of Byteboard. Sargon and Nikki, welcome to Spotlight. Thank you so much for having us. Really excited to have you here. So to get us started, can you tell us a little bit more about Byteboard? Sure. So Byteboard is a technical interviewing platform that's redesigned technical interviews to be more effective, efficient, and equitable. We started about two and a half years ago. Nikki and I met on Google campus at a hackathon at that point. It was a problem that we felt to our core very, very deeply. Um, interviews were broken for, and they were particularly impacting underrepresented individuals that were trying to get through the technical interview process. Typical traditional technical interviews focus a lot on theoretical knowledge and the application of theoretical knowledge, but those skills aren't actually transferable to what you end up doing on the job in most cases. So that includes, you know, having to study and prepare for these interviews in a way that's separate from studying to become a software engineer. So today, if I, as a software engineer, wanted to go interview at a different company, I would have to go through the studying and prepping process all over again, which doesn't make sense. So we've created a, an interview that focuses on actual skills that are used on the job in an environment that's very similar to working on a project as you would in school or as you would to do on the first day of your, of your job in a technical team. And all our interviews in terms of candidate materials are anonymized to ensure that the evaluation is as unbiased as possible. We have really structured rubrics tied in with our evaluation to ensure objectiveness and how evaluation is being done. And we've seen tremendous results by you know companies like Lyft, Dropbox, Robinhood have been using this for their candidates to hire. And not only from a candidate experience pers perspective where candidates are saying like, oh, this is really fun to work on. I actually forgot I was working on an interview. Um, to the company perspective of like, oh, like I'm confident we're actually getting a really solid signal on technical skills in a way that our interviews in the our interviews in the past were potentially leaving out great candidates because those candidates just didn't know how to study for interviews, but they were great software engineers we were leaving off of our pipeline. So we've seen tremendous results kind of from both the candidate side and the company side and are and are continuing to work on, you know, developing more and more domains. We just launched data science. Uh, and improve the technical interview experience for everyone, regardless of what demographic they come from or what experience they come from. Well, that's great. And so can you take us back to that first meeting between the two of you? How did this idea come to be? What was that initial sort of step? My favorite story. <laughs> yeah, I, I can take that. Yeah. Um, so so Sargon and I met at an, a startup weekend um, that was put on by Area 120. And Area 120 is Google's internal startup incubator. And so we were both, you know, Google employees who found out about this awesome startup weekend that was happening that was focused on social entrepreneurship. So thinking about how can we utilize, you know, business and enterprise in order to actually motivate social good. And I think both of us were very passionate about social impact. And so we were really excited about this prospect of going um, to the startup weekend, getting to kind of work with people on a project and, and hopefully potentially come up with an idea that actually had real impact. Um, so we both go to this startup weekend. Um, we both pitch different ideas. We don't end up on the same team. So so she ends up working on a really cool idea. I end up working on a different idea. Um, and I, basically at the end of the weekend, you 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 pitched your idea in a kind of a competition format. Um, and if you won this competition, you kind of got a golden ticket um, to pitch Area 120. Um, neither of our ideas ended up winning this golden ticket. Um, but really, I think we are the ones that won because we met each other at this startup weekend. Um, so we met at the startup weekend. We were like, your idea is cool. You seem cool. Um, you know, maybe we should we should grab coffee or something after, after all of this is over. Um, and of course, you say that to about 100 people people probably throughout the weekend. But for some reason, I think we we had a real connection and we actually met up and grabbed lunch and um, kind of started talking. And um, at the time I was I was considering going to design school. And for some reason, Sargon was also considering going to design school. And we were both engineers by training, but um, we were we were both really interested in design. And so I was working on a design portfolio and I was like, hey, like, 
We're both interested in potentially building out a design portfolio. Let's meet up and potentially put together a case study together. Um, and and that's kind of where where everything started happening. So Sargon, do you want to kind of take on what what that first um, kind of meetup looked like when we worked on our what was supposed to be a portfolio that turned into a a business? <laughs> Yeah, so I remember that day really clearly. Uh, We had given each other prompts. We had given each other four prompts we had talked about during um, during our coffee. Was like, what are what are things or areas we're really really passionate about? Um, And this is early 2018 at this point. We had met up a month after that hackathon, and police brutality was still something that was really top of mind for us as it is today. And so that was one category we had we had assigned ourselves. So like, what maybe technical impacts or technical creations could we make um, to help support um, kind of the violence that was going on, particularly against the black community um, in conjunction with with police brutality. Two, uh, education was really top of mind for us. Uh, So we we had a category on education. Then we had health tech, uh, something about like, I think it was like, you know, getting us more motivated and more fit, plenty of apps around that, um, but nothing had stuck at that point. And then lastly, it was, was diversity in tech. We were both in tech. We were both women of color. Uh, both came from, you know, really unique backgrounds and were often the only people that looked like ourselves in most of the rooms um, across school, across our internships, across our interview rooms. You know, so that was something that we were really passionate about. We gave each other four prompts. We went home. We researched and brainstormed ideas, like really quick ideas kind of under each prompt and then reconvened a couple of days later and started to whiteboard these ideas of what did you think about? What did you think about? And as we discussed these ideas, we landed kind of on the category of diversity in tech. And that conversation just took kind of its own path as we, as we started to talk about it. And we're like, you know, these interviews are really difficult. And Nikki shared her experience with interviews and was like, oh, this is what I've done. I actually got rejected the first time I, you know, interviewed at Google um, and I like almost made it, but I hadn't like practiced this algorithm in time and I didn't remember my bid operations or like knew exactly what I had like missed on my interview. And if I had memorized that bid operation, I felt like I could have like aced that interview. Uh, So all these variables that were coming in and and that kind of led us to start researching, asking our friends, looking up stories of other individuals. And we found that it was just, there was so much out there of people feeling very, very similarly about interviews, but nothing had changed. Like n- no one had like gone and tried to like actually re-examine why are we doing these interviews and do they have to be in the format that they're being done in? So that was the night that we actually even coined the word whiteboard, which stands is kind of a spinoff of the word whiteboard, whiteboard interviews. Uh, Biteboard is you're getting more bites out of an individual because it's a more holistic interview. And it's been almost two and a half, three years since. That's amazing. And I think it's so great to see how you kind of went through that process of thinking about different areas, but then you both kind of decided on this one really problematic area that hadn't seemed to be addressed by the greater society or people in tech. So um, thank you for coming up with this. And uh, we'll definitely link to more information about Byteboard in the description. We're going to leave you on a little bit of a cliffhanger because next week we're going to talk with you both more about your experience as founders and what that journey, what that past two and a half years have been like. Everyone who's watching now, please make sure to tune in next week. Sargon and Nikki will be back um, and telling us more about their experience as co-founders. So we'll see you then.